Good morning, Cyber Traders. Welcome back. How's everybody doing this lovely Tuesday with a nice little rally that we got going on in the market? Good to see you all. Mike, good to see you. Lewis, good to see you, Grant, everybody. Well, we're getting a nice little pop. How was that? Up 1,600 points on a Monday. I feel like deja vu about two weeks ago when we had that big rally. Looks like we're doing it all over again. So, hope you guys did your homework last night and seen what was going on. But, um, you know, I, uh, I had some swing trades. I sold them, took a little bit of a profit, not as much as I liked when we had the stock started re reversing, and then I bought everything back again. Uh, good thing I did, but I think, you know, listen, we got a double bottom that's going on right now in a lot of stocks. You could see it even here. We're going to talk about Carnival Cruise Line. You can see it right here. There's like a double bottom right here, but, uh, but there's a lot of nice little movers, and uh, let me just change the slide. And right, right here, you can see it, and every stock looks exactly the same, every single one of them. So... Listen, um, you know, just really quick talking about what happened here with uh, Carnival Cruise Line. I think uh, the news was out that a Saudi firm invested into CCL or taking a nice little stake in it. I I'm telling you, I can see a lot of that happening right now. Listen, they're not going to be as dumb as they were when they gave all this money uh, in the financial district. Remember the financial um, when they, you know, I, I, I think it's hysterical what they did, you know, but you know, the banks, but they took all the money and they say, yeah, 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 yeah. We'll do whatever you want. Cause they were like begging in their knees to like, please, please give me the money. And then they bought all their stock and they did. <laughs> and then when they ran the stock up, they said, hey, you know what? We changed our mind and we don't need your money anymore here. Here's your stock back. Here's the money you gave us. So uh, they were perfectly fine. So I don't think we're going to have that much of a, that much of a uh, uh, same situation. So I just think more people are going to start, uh, you know, maybe mergers might be coming in. Um, you're going to see big companies taking big stakes into it. So I think you're going to see a lot of that now if people start feeling comfortable, especially, you know, if you watch the news, if you watch uh, uh, the Governor Cuomo was talking about it yesterday regarding about, like, the death rate is obviously hopefully not as bad as they think. They're seeing a little bit of a curve coming down a little sooner than later, which is great. You know, I mean, that's some great news. So uh, Mark kind of likes that. you got to remember, look at this stock right here. $50 down to $10. I mean, you could go down the list. There was so many of them. Airlines, all these, uh, the ones that got hit most, hotels, everything. And people are going to realize, you know, you're going to look back a year from now, and you're going to be like, why didn't I buy back then, you know? Believe me, I've been there, and I've done that back in 2008. So, um, you know, so anyway, a lot of big movers moving in here. I, listen, I can go through the list, but there's a lot of them out there that are already moving. I mean, we could talk about, I mean, we got... <laughs> You got the CCL. I mean, all these all these companies are doing great. You got this one that's moving. You got, uh, you, you know, you got uh, Norwegian that's moving pretty nicely. Which one was that one? The NCLH. Oops, typed in the wrong window. Hold on. NCLH. Uh, that one's moving up a pretty nicely. But remember what I told you earlier. Um, when I told you earlier, when we started trading in pre-market, you all know we start at 8 o'clock in the morning. Actually, some of us get in around at 7.45. You know, the issue with some of these stocks, though, is that the spreads are pretty big. So you got to be careful in pre-game. Remember, we saw what happened with LK, Luke and Coffee. We killed it. Stocks were, you know, that, we, that was a really big day for all of us. But the problem is, is that, you know, the spread gets pretty big. So you got to be careful. The, these spreads get a little bit better and tighter now. So if you didn't get into any stocks right now, I mean, listen, you shouldn't be trading anything after 9, 9.30. You know, that's pretty much the dangerous time. We talk about that in class a lot. But right around 8.30, you got that 8.30 to 9, 9 o'clock move. If you got a good position in, into it, just like this one, you could see it right here. Let me just change the uh, the chart a little bit better. So right around here, 8.30, you could see it, you know, really kind of made this big move right here, made, made, made higher highs. You know, you're looking pretty good. So if you got in here around 11 to 80, 11 90, you're looking pretty damn good. You know, it's always nice to start. Um, it's always nice to start with with a, with a positive going into the open. But um, but regarding about about yesterday, just really quick about yesterday, we had that big big winner uh, uh, with with the market. A lot of big stocks moved. But remember too, you know, trading these stocks when the market's making a big comeback, they got to be more of a swing trade. These ain't scalps. You know, you got to be careful. And if you notice, like. Let me just bring up BA, my favorite stock out there. I bought a bunch of shares of this stock uh, when it packed off. But right here at the gate, let me just show you. Uh, that's not a good sign. 
Okay, right here at 3.30, you can see when it started making its move, but like the last couple of minutes is where it made its big pop. You know what I mean? So you got to be really careful of that. So, uh, yeah, look at this. Hope it goes. This stock is, I can't believe this thing. Look, it's not, it's not even making, it's making a higher high. It's not even making a lower low or it even hit a double bottom. So, you know, looking good for BA. By the way, you think, you think you're chasing it, buying here at, you know, 163? I don't know. It was only at 350 less than a month ago. You know what I mean? Like, it's just so scary what, what happened to these things. All because of this damn little virus. And you know what? I'm going to say it again. I'm going to say it again. I'm going to say it again. Nothing was bringing down this market. We were on pace. And I was predicting by November, we were going to be at 35,000. Okay? On the Dow. Only thing that could take down this market, the only thing was... You know, a catastrophe, a war, uh, another 9-11, whatever it may be. Whoever thought of some stupid virus was going to come out of nowhere. You know? So anyway, fortunately for us, we got a job. A lot of people don't. Fortunately for us, we're making money in trading. Fortunately for us, we're glad that we're here. So listen, like I tell everyone, there's no better time to be in it than now. But there are a couple of stocks I do want to bring up. I don't need to go through all of them because you could, you could figure them out. All the airlines, JetBlue. Um, is, is gapped up. You can see it's a double bottom. Uh, UAL actually looks a little bit better than that one, uh, JetBlue. That one's trending up a little bit nicer. That one's doing really well. AAL, that one also. That one's probably the nicest one out of them all. Remember, 10 was a major, major support level. When it broke 10, it had some major issues. Now it breaks 10. It's, it's up on an uh, uh, uptrend a little bit more. So American Airlines, you know, look, once again, you know, I, no disrespect to American Airlines. I don't know if anybody here works for them. I don't like American Airlines. Okay, I, I flew them once. It's a terrible experience. I flew them again. It was even a worse experience. Um, and it was so bad that the plane I was flying on had the little cigarette uh, things on the, on the handles. That's how old the plane was. But it doesn't mean I'm not going to trade it. I still trade it and make money. Why not, right? So don't. Do, one thing you learn as a trader, please don't. If you don't believe in their values, you don't believe in, in, in the company, whatever it is, listen, if it, you know, this is not, they're not investing, we're trading, okay? But American Airlines, you know, uh, doing pretty well. My favorite is obviously Delta. Uh, Delta taking a big hit, coming back a little. Delta moves, well. now you guys know this, Spirit is exactly the same. You know what, my wife told me that, Ken, and she said she'll never fly that airline again, and, uh, you know, I mean, I don't know. I hear good things and bad things, but you know what? You want to fly to Florida for 15 bucks. You know what I mean? <laughs> so anyway, regarding about, uh, you know, a lot of these stocks also, just keep in mind that Delta obviously moves the fastest. You know, we've been trading a lot of these stocks, and you know that this is one of the things that kind of trades a little bit more quicker than the other ones. Uh, JetBlue, not as fast. American, you know, not as fast, but this one definitely does. There was one stock that has nothing to do uh, that was gapped up pretty nicely this morning. I don't know what happened to this one, but I thought this one was going to be an interesting stock. It was up almost like 90%. 3 million shares traded, got great iceberg orders on the right, but now she's starting to pan out. I don't know what happened with this one here. Uh, I might just scratch it off. It was just moving up so nicely in pre-market, and all of a sudden, now it backed off. Now, you got, so those are really... Going across the board, oh, LUV, that one. There you go. Southwest Airlines. Yeah, double bottom. You could see that right there. They all look exactly the same, okay? If there was an ETF on airlines, that's what you basically would be seeing. But, um, but anyway, that's uh, basically, you know, we got a good market. We're up about almost 800 right now. I would wait. Listen, what, the way I would play this out going into the open is that I would try not to buy anything. Uh, wait about five minutes. I think you might get some profit taking going on. But if, unless you got a good position, biggest, most important thing you guys got to remember, please put your limit orders out there. Now, if you're not part of CTU and you don't know what a direct access broker is, is you basically can never even put a limit order because you'll never get filled, you know, uh, in a way of knowing that you're going to get at the price, you know, as a direct access broker. But, um, but you know, for people who do have direct access, when you put a market order, remember, the most important thing that we train you in the beginning of the year, uh, actually the beginning of the classes, 
is you got to make sure the stock has the first T, tradable. Remember the three T's, tradable, trend, and trap, okay? You only get suckered in, want to know what the trend is, but the most expensive part of the trade is, is the spread. So you got to be careful of that because buying 1,000 shares right now, LUV at, and if you can get it, there's only one share, 100 shares at 34.19. If you're wrong and you had to hit the bid, you're going to get at 34.07, maybe in 34, and boom, you'll lose $150 in the blink of an eye. Yeah, to, you know what? I saw that too on Julie. Uh, yeah, Tops is moving pretty nicely. Um, you know, once again, it's under under a dollar, so now we're dealing pennies of stock, and then also, you know, it, it, you know, fractions of a penny. But Tops, yes, I saw that pop up it's on the biggest percentage gainer up here on the uh, on the most active list on the hot list. But uh, but there are a lot of other stocks in here you can keep an eye on. I mean, this one's also. Moving pretty nicely. A lot of volume of 36% right now of $4. Not terrible. But I don't know. I saw it go up and then it's kind of, they're kind of like flatlined. So I'm like, I'm not really excited about it. Chuck made 40 cents in TLR. Why? All right. Give him a round of applause. Nice way to start the morning. All right, everybody. Listen, good luck today. Happy trading. We'll put these on a watch list. Just keep in mind. Not everything, um, we're always going to find new stocks that will open up. You know, could this be the bottom? I don't know. We need three, to me personally, we need three winning days uh, before people start reacting. Listen, you heard there's a new stimulus package might be coming out for another trillion dollars. That's only good. And as long as the numbers of the death tolls keep dropping on the stupid virus, uh, that's going to change things also. So let's, uh, let's keep an eye on it. So swing trading could be actually be a good thing right now. So, you know. Hopefully you guys are free and a lot of cash, a lot of money to be made right now. Like I said, it's been over 12 years since I've seen something like this. And now they're predicting this is actually more of a catastrophe and more of a rally than uh, the financial district, a financial uh, uh, catastrophe we had in 2008. Good luck, everyone. Happy trading. And if you're new for your cyber trade university, like we always say, just look, listen, and learn. Please do not trade anything we're trading. Make sure you talk to your education advisor. That's part of your package, what you're getting here. You know, you have to kind of keep it, you know, know what's going on to make sure it's for you. Because, listen, it's not for everybody. And like I say, that's okay. Good luck, everybody. Happy trading. And we'll start commentating in the room in about 15 minutes once the market opens up.